Hi guys, welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to have some Division 15 ranked online gameplay in the light heavyweight division using Alexander Gustafsson. And before we get into the actual breakdown of the video, just want to say a big thank you to everyone that's been uh, supporting the streams lately, supporting the videos, it uh, means a lot. And also, shout out to my opponent who I play here, who's in uh, Division 19, who actually messaged me after the fight and um, basically just said, GG, you fought very well. And this is a very interesting matchup here. and. And this is exactly how I'd recommend to use Alexander Gustafsson. So, we're coming up against Rumble Johnson, who's obviously got an extreme amount of power. Good wrestling as well. And going into this one, obviously, we'll have the advantage in the boxing. Not so much the power, but actual boxing technique itself. Kickboxing 100%. And also, range. So, that's something that we've got to utilise. And Gustafsson is so, so well balanced. He really stacks up well against most of the division. One thing to note, of course, there is a five-round fight, so stamina management is going to be a crucial part of this fight here. And whenever I like, whenever I'm using Alexander Gustafsson, the one thing I like to do is show the to my opponent that I'm not scared to, you know, be on the ground. And if I have to work them on the ground, Gustafsson has no problem doing that. He's got very good ground game for someone that's primarily a kickboxer. And you've got to look to utilize leg kicks team kicks front kicks knees when your opponent gets in and he's got obviously because of the reach he's got a nice jab and you can really hide behind that jab and then when you throw that straight to intercept your opponent's combinations and obviously depending on who you're fighting majority of the time in this division you will come up against Daniel Cormier's five star John Jones Glover Teixeira but this this was quite refreshing coming up against um, a different fighter here but with, uh, with Rubble Johnson, obviously, it's the threat of the, the power. That's the main thing. And you're going to get pressured, block break, and then bang, big shot could uh, finish the fight. And as you see, a beautiful front kick lands there. And the full process behind this whole fight, really, is to work my opponent's body and my opponent's legs. Because the more you take out that lead leg, the easier it's going to be for you to mitigate your opponent's power. Because your opponent isn't going to have a lot of power if the lead leg's gone. So that's the full process. is body, lead leg... And one thing that I've noticed early is I've got to start stopping these takedowns because my opponent is looking to take me down, hold me down for a bit and probably just build control time to end up winning the round. But we've got to look to do a better job here of denying that. Gustafsson is just he's super, super clean. I, I think he's, he's underused. He's underappreciated in this game. He's so he's, he's a very good counter to most of the elite fighters in this division obviously with Daniel Cormier you can keep him at range John Jones they're similar heights and John's big weakness is boxing you can really force that boxing heavy impact style on him Glover Teixeira you can outbox him also the the only weakness really in his game is of course that he isn't a wrestler if you're losing the the standout battle you don't really want to be wrestling especially with some of the wrestlers they have in this division however if you're forced to you can and Throughout this first round here, it's been a fairly even first round. My opponent's landed those um, two takedowns. So potentially the round's going to be going to him. We've done some good work on the lead leg. We've landed uh, a few strikes to the body here and there. As you see, significant strikes I think was level. We threw more. But overall, my opponent's done a good job. And coming into this round here, I can see... I can now, you know... I use the first round as a basis to see uh, what my opponent's going to do. Pick up on combinations. You can see that I'm working the body here on the inside, beautiful knee snuck in. And I'm trying to make these reads pick up on these little combinations, throw that beautiful uppercut. And I don't know if anyone remembers that amazing finish against uh, Glover Teixeira, which I think was, I think the fight was in Sweden. Beautiful, that it was like a triple uppercut uh, finish. And I remember watching that and I just thought, wow, he's incredibly special. And... One thing you'll notice that I do utilise a lot is I sway to the left and right when I'm trapped against the cage. This is, you know, just to avoid my opponent's big hand. I usually uh, try to circle away. So if my opponent's, you know, right-handed, I want to circle the opposite way. But you can see my opponent's landing a couple head kicks here and there. And I'm back to working the leg. And you've just got to fight a calm fight. Whenever my opponent's in boxing range, I'm more than happy to box. However, I've got to know my limits because when you're fighting such a powerful puncher, one fight, can, one punch can really change the whole aspect of the fight. 
So I'm mean, gonna if I use Gustafsson, I'm quite calm. And in, this, in the heavier divisions, you can't take as many shots. Obviously, that's that's common sense because they just have more weight behind their their punches. It's less forgiving. So no matter how clean I keep the fight, one little punch can really change the whole outcome. As you can see here, doing a good job now of protecting the body. Stamina's at a decent level for the round we're in. Like I said, I've got to keep this stamina higher because I'm looking to take this into the championship rounds, really drain my opponent, and then look to implement a finish or decision victory. I'm not going to rush to get um, Johnson out of here because one punch can end the fight. But my opponent's doing a good job here of trying to get on the inside. But right now, I feel like I'm starting to get more control of the fight as we land a good flurry of punches and knees there. I'm starting to feel comfortable. And we, we get the takedown here. That's that's just to stamina dump my opponent. When you throw your opponent down like that, it really does drain the stamina. And we're growing in confidence. This is exactly what you want in a championship fight. You want to feel like you're in control going into the third, fourth and fifth. There's nothing worse than having a solid first round where your opponent makes adjustments. And then you're on the back foot for the next remaining four rounds. And right now I'm really starting to work my opponent. I'm throwing a bit more. And one thing I do is I don't throw a lot of significant strikes. I really, I slowly build up to those points. I'm very selective with when I throw significant strikes purely because I want to keep stamina management to the best it can be. Because if you throw a significant strike and you miss, it's just going to come back on you 10 times harder because of the stamina. And the way my fight style with how I move and how I sway around the octagon, I need my stamina to be higher so I can implement that style because this is something that goes across all my fights and as you can see there the head movement absolutely beautiful we opt to get my opponent in the clinch and just throw some knees and that was another good round so the first round i'll probably give to my opponent the this round here i believe i've done some good work building confidence starting to get establishing the range feeling out the distance picking up on the habits that my opponent does you can see respect shown here and this is where again straight away hitting the leg and my opponents come out a lot more aggressive but after you threw the uppercut you can see by my opponent's posture the hands went quite low that my opponent is starting to feel it the the gas tank is starting to deplete and my opponent's looking for that big punch so the head movement here needs to be really good and again we're working the leg as soon as i'm in that kickboxing range if i'm not going to the body i'm going to the leg and i'm trying to trying to mix in as well as possible because i don't want my opponent to get too many leg ch uh, leg checks you see my opponent goes for the takedown here and gets it, although I thought I did deny it. And at the start of the third, we're back on the ground, which is not an ideal situation. However, we're going to look to escape here. And again, I'm just trying to pick up on little patterns. My opponent done a very good job there of mixing it up. And here you've just got to be composed because you don't want to rush into something and then get, the, get into an even worse position. So I'm alright, I'm content with my opponent throwing these shots here building up control time see another very good job of the ground and pound mixing up it was very hard for me to read where my opponent was trying to go get the deny here and end up on top and this is a very good indication of where my opponent's stamina is at so i know my opponent's stamina is definitely lower than mine which i could tell anyway from when we was on the feet and when my opponent was throwing these big flurries because where I was keeping my opponent at reach and making my opponent, I was forcing my opponent to fight my style of fight. It was becoming incredibly hard for my opponent to close that distance. And when my opponent did close that distance, he was getting punished with either knees, the occasional uppercut, the check hook. And it's just these little things that were throwing my opponent off. So what I noticed that my opponent was having the tendency of doing was throwing these big flurry of combinations of significant strikes. And that's going to deplete the gas tank heavily and like i said in these championship fights you've really got to manage your stamina because if i was on the receiving end of this if my stamina was low and my opponent looks to wrestle me and looks to get a choke it's going to be very hard for me to get out of that and throughout this fight you will see me come up against some adversity in the later rounds and it's why it's so critical that my stamina is in the level of set now right now we're just doing a good good job here of uh, controlling my opponent my opponent ends up getting the getting my back here. We opt to go to full guard because I'm more in control of this position. It's less dangerous. I didn't want my opponent to get to back sitting and then work into top mount or the rear naked choke. However, with how much time was left on the clock, 
my opponent wouldn't have been able to sink it in. We get, do a good job here of getting up. And I go in here just to throw a couple of strikes. I've only 25 seconds left. Go to throw the teep kick. And then my opponent catches me beautifully. As you see, my opponent's really pressuring. No stamina here. And now I'm going to look to pressure my opponent. We then, as you can see, throwing huge combinations here. I was really looking to get the knockdown. And that last 30 seconds was very uh, back and forth. My opponent timed that head kick very well. My opponent had been using it in round 2. And coming into round 4 here, I know that's something that my opponent may have found a little hole in my game plan there. He's going to try sneaking their head kick. And as you see at the end of that combination, as soon as I saw my opponent's body was starting to move. Because once they start moving their body, their leg is exposed. And that's exactly what I look to utilise. And I'm trying to throw small combinations to not let my opponent reset. I'll just throw a straight here and there, a leg kick. So whenever my opponent's trying to unload, there's just a little punch, a little something to really pause that combination and make my opponent have a different read, have to think about things differently before entering the space sneak in and knee there beautifully and if you take a look in the top right my stamina is in a great position for the fourth round this is a, a good indication of the stamina management that works is coming to use here and if in the fifth i really need to pressure to get a finish i'm going to have the gas tank to do so and the head movement and the sways have been a big part of this fight and gustafsson has such good movement as you see i'm starting to throw out fakes here my opponent's really loading up on this overhand and Right now, the way my opponent's fighting, I can tell that my opponent knows he needs a big strike in order to finish the fight. Feels the fight slowly getting away from him. And I'm expecting a takedown here and there, just because my opponent has been frying them. So that's something that I'm, I'm conscious of. It's in the back of my mind. And that the lead leg work is, is, is going to start to show. And as you can see there, front kick gets the stun. My opponent's doing a good job there of moving his head. So I don't look to unload too much just because, you know, when people are flicking that right analogue around, it's quite hard to hit them. And I don't want to drain my gas tank. And then my opponent hits me with something bigger and I'm in trouble. Uh, my opponent drained the stamina again. And then we worked the body. We had a beautiful uppercut to the body, followed by a knee. You see my opponent's really trying to break my block here. But again, because of the great work we've been doing the rounds prior, my opponent's stamina just isn't at the level it needs to be to really, really push to break the block and then get a knockdown and I'm back to working the leg I'm back to picking my opponent apart being careful being cautious my opponent's sneaking in these knees now but I'm all right with taking them I don't want to take you know too many but the odd the odd one here or there I'm fine with we get the beautiful knockdown up to jump on top my opponent sways perfectly and this is extremely dangerous because my opponent gets the arm by here now Although Rumble Johnson doesn't have the best submissions, this is still not a great position to be in. But if you look at my stamina in the top right, it's in a good enough position. I did a great job there of mixing up where I was going and we managed to escape. So that was key there because my opponent really had time to see out that armbar if need be. And my opponent's trying to ground and pound me now, doesn't have the stamina to do so. And this is, this is all perfect. So my opponent's stamina is in a terrible position. We sway here, now we end up on top. This has been a very back and forth uh, fight on the ground for this round here. And we're very close to getting my opponent away there. If a couple straights and the fight would have probably been over. Coming into the fifth now, feeling very confident that we're, we're winning the fight probably by two two rounds. Um, maybe, I think, I think we've won probably three out of the four, so... Coming into here, I'm not overly eager to, to get the finish, but where my opponent swayed there, that was a telltale sign that my opponent has no stamina. And knowing that, I'm really going to look to to press just to see if I could get the finish. Uh, managing distance very well, getting out of the range of those knees and these big strikes, because I know my opponent needs something massive in order to finish the fight here. Because my head health's in a decent level, stamina's decent level, body's decent level, so... We've done a good job of protecting ourselves throughout the whole fight here. And the head movement there, it just stops my block from getting damaged. That straight drops my opponent here. And now that I know that obviously my opponent's hurt, my opponent doesn't have stamina. Beautiful knockdown there, folded like a chair. Accidentally went for a takedown when obviously I went to go for a body strike. And there's the leg. 
the legs finally snap him there. My opponent's forced to switch stance. And again, look look how I'm keeping that range. I'm not I'm not forcing to go into this boxing range to look for the finish. I'm very calm. I'm seeing if I can get a reaction out of my opponent. Straight lands again hurts my opponent. Two hooks. And we're just looking to break the block here. Sink a beautiful knee. Opponent throws a big strike, which doesn't land. And again, this is all distance management. This knees are starting to pay their dividends now also. And again, my opponent's gas tank is just not there. And with two minutes left, the finish is looking more and more likely. Another knockdown here. My opponent's moving his head. We go to the body. Big overhand right doesn't land again. As you see, my opponent just has nothing in the gas tank here. Teep to the body. And we're still going to be working that body. And then we finally get the knockout there. So this is this is exactly how I'd use uh, Gustafsson. You know, calm, patient, use distance well, leg kicks, clean boxing, clean knees. Ground game's also good. I didn't show a good job of the takedown defense here, but I wasn't really expecting too much. That I was just expecting a, a stand-up war, so my opponent done a great job there of taking me down. But as you see, my opponent couldn't hold me down. We often reverse the position and end up doing work of ourselves. So, again, super clean fight with Alexander Gustafsson. Uh, well done to my opponent. As you can see, we leveled up quite a lot there because obviously my opponent was in a higher division, Division 19 at the time. The judges' scorecards are going to come up now. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe if you are new and I'll catch you next time.